Welcome to the farms.com risk management educational grain commodity marketing school video series. This video series being sponsored to you and brought to you by Decal Brand Seed to educate producers across Canada on how to do a better job of commodity marketing or grain commodity marketing. In this video series, our 13th video, we're going to be looking at uh, hedging with futures, why it works. We'll look at some examples of going short and long and we're going to look at the advantages and shortcomings of hedging with futures. So let's start off with a definition of hedging. Uh, to hedge is to take a position in the futures market that is equal and opposite to a position held in the cash market. Most producers are long a physical commodity such as corn, hogs, wheat, canola. The objective when hedging with futures is to minimize the risk, the, uh, the, the adverse price movement uh, in the cash position. So um, let's look at how hedging actually works. In the last few videos that we've done, uh, it was shown that cash and future prices are highly correlated. Uh, this is necessary for hedging to work. If the price of corn falls before corn bushels are ready for market, this is a loss to a producer. So the producer wants to minimize that loss. However, uh, corn futures will also fall. So as the cash price is falling, futures are going to go with it. If a producer sells, those, sells that future price before the price falls, um, he's going to benefit from that. By selling corn futures, the grain, when, um, when prices fall, offsets some of the loss in the cash position. Let's go through a quick example with a short hedge. Hedging by selling futures is called a short hedge because the initial futures position is short. So the farmer is long the physical, he's going to be short the futures. The risk is that the price of the commodity will fall. So the producer puts on a short hedge to protect that farmer, that hedger, from a decline in price, future price, of that product or commodity owned or being produced. The producer is said to be long, again, the physical commodity. He's opposite the futures position. A long hedge is actually the opposite of a short hedge. For example, pork packer is in exactly this, the uh, different position than, say, a hog producer. A packer requires hogs in the future. He's short the physical commodity. So his risk is that the price will go up. Therefore, he would hedge by going long futures to offset an increase in price. If prices rises, the cost of hogs will increase, but so will the value of that futures position. Profits on futures can be used to offset that higher um, cost of hogs. Let's give you a quick example of that short hedge with a, this is the December 2011 uh, corn futures daily chart. You can see the, the nice run that corn has had here in the last uh, eight to nine months. So a producer today who, you know, is pl put, planning on uh, planting corn in 2011, uh, if he likes this price, he's making money, he can actually go short futures. Remember in our past video series, we talked about that forward sale, physical forward sale, Maybe you can lock in that basis, but if maybe you don't want to take that risk, that physical risk, maybe you don't like the basis, want to maybe leave some of that open because maybe production is questionable, maybe it's not an early planting season, well, you can definitely short futures at these prices. So let's give an example. In this example here with corn, uh, the producer's thinking of, of uh, planting some corn this year. He's going to harvest sometime in October. The price right now is $6.65. He assumes that the basis today is minus 75 cents under the December futures contract. Let's assume that that stays the same by the time we get into November. So he decides, okay, I'm not going to do that physical forward contract. I'm, I'm going to leave the basis open and I'm going to short futures at 665. So he calls up the broker, says I want to short uh, one contract, 5,000 bushels of corn off the December contract at 665. Okay, once that's executed by the broker, and we talked about brokers and commodity accounts in past video series, um, uh, by the time we get to November, the price of corn falls to $4 a bushel. Basis stays the same. Uh, so we get to three and a quarter. The futures position, okay, as, as, as uh, cash has fallen, so has the futures. It's offset that uh, loss. Uh, in the cash market and you still get uh, that similar price of 590 that you would have locked in physically in the month of April. Let's assume futures are rising. So you still want to, you still get a short at the 665. Basis stays the same, but futures all of a sudden go to eight. 
in November, you're going to get eight for your corn, less your basis, so seven and a quarter. But because you shorted futures and you locked in that price at 665, you have to subtract the loss to that seven and a quarter, and you're still going to get your 590. So it doesn't always work. Um, uh, really, futures, uh, that's one of the negatives is, is, is as long as you can call the direction, you're going to do fine. Otherwise, you're locking yourself in at 665. There's nothing wrong with a 665 corn price. So, um, short hedge, uh, so uh, key insights from this example hedging reduces that price risk because cash and futures are correlated. The value of the futures account increased by 265 a bushel. This offsets the loss on the cash position as long as the basis stays the same. The basis could go either way. Now, Again, um, when looking at the outcome uh, of this hedge, you also have to evaluate the basis. You have to have some understanding of basis. We'll talk about basis next week. We'll start to talk about uh, basis for storable commodities next week. Uh, in reality, most producers don't sell at that delivery point like Chicago. It's, it's in a local market. That local basis will determine ultimately what that basis will do, uh, supply, demand, currencies, that sort of thing. So. Um, so you need to consider that before placing this futures position on. Let's give you a second example going along a hedge for feed. So again, this is December 2011 uh, corn daily futures chart. And in our example, we're saying futures are rising. 665 is corn today, basis minus 75. And the futures price goes up. You can see that um, we've left about $1.35 on the table here. And you're going to have to um, add it to the, um, um, sorry, subtract it from the seven and a quarter uh, to get to the 590. Uh, so uh, in this case, he locked the, the, the pork packer or maybe a hog producer was able to lock in corn at 590. The futures offset a rising cost later in the future. If futures fall, then the opposite happens. Uh, there's a difference of um, um, uh, 285. So again, subtract that from the um, overall cost in November to get back to the 590 a bushel. So if you're a buyer feed and you want to manage that risk and, uh, of the increase in, in the price of grain, then the opposite is true. You buy the corn or the barley futures to offset that risk. If prices move up, you gain. If prices move down, you actually get to buy the corn and the barley cheaper in the physical market. So, what's the difference between a forward sale and futures? Well, as we've seen, prices are achieved. Um, uh, selling through a forward sales is identical to using futures, provided the basis is the same at delivery. Futures, however, expose the hedger to margin commitments, brokers, uh, commissions, and other costs discussed in last week's video. So have a quick look at that if you haven't had a chance to look at that. So what are the advantages? Well, uh, using futures do have some advantages. You get to leave the basis open. Potentially, that basis can uh, gain on you over, over time. Uh, the opposite is also true though. That basis could get wider. The hedger has no commitment, physical commitment to a local elevator. So that, that remains wide open. And in some situations where there is no physical market where you can deliver to, you can still use futures to manage that risk and volatility. Uh, the payout from hedging futures uh, occurs when cash prices go in the direction you thought. Hedging with futures is like locking in a price, plus or minus your local basis. It guarantees you that particular price. However, there's still risk even when futures do not offer good prices. Studies have shown that hedging with futures really works in very high markets like 2008 or 2010-11. So in summary, um, understanding hedging with futures, how, how to hedge with futures is important. It can assist uh, farmers um, and understanding advantages and shortcomings can assist farmers in um, doing a better job of that marketing, managing that risk and volatility in the future. Um, think of it as another tool in your arsenal that you can use uh, at different times of the year looking for you know maybe to take advantage of opportunities or maybe when the physical market's not available or potentially you have some production uh, issues you can use futures to manage that risk particularly in very high markets like today in our next video series we're going to look at basis for storable commodities like grains thanks for joining us today we